Well, hello team PHP and uh, welcome to a new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about functions. A function is a really, really big deal and important concept in programming in general and PHP in a special case. So today we're going to learn what is functions and how do we use functions and uh, everything related to functions. Um, first thing first, just in case you're looking at this Linux uh, uh, interface uh, window, if you see a, a message like there are 16 packages need to for security, that basically means you need to go and update your system. Again, it's basically telling you what to do. So every once in a while, check for this and give it a go. It should not take that long. Do you want to do that? Yes. And now you are up to date. Not really right now, but just give it a sec. And well, we're talking about 80. That's a lot. I was what, what was I thinking? Am I good? Nope. Still waiting. this is fast okay clean up clean up clean up we should be good to go just give it a few seconds come on now okay so our system is up to date let's go ahead and and, and uh, as we said we're talking about functions today i'm going to go navigate var www html now if i go list you will see that I have those three files. So uh, for now, ignore those test one and test two PHP. Let's just focus on uh, sudo uh, nano index HTML. And here we go. This is my nano and it's empty. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and talk about functions. What is a function? Now, in programming in general, just like I said, in a lot of cases, you may find yourself um, repeating a piece of code multiple times. Like, for example, you want to get something done. You, For example, you want to build a table. So you build a table, and then in another page, you want to build another table, and you want it to be dynamic, so you have a PHP code for it, and you go ahead and build a table using that page. And then after that, you went to a third page, and you had to create another table there. So... Creating that table, when you, when you do that, you will notice a redundant in the process. The, the, the PHP code is going to be repeated for four or five times. Now, this is something we don't want it to happen. There's no point of you repeating the same code here and there. So what we can do, and instead of repeating the same code, we can use functions. And functions is basically a piece of code that you're going to be created. And that piece of code is designed to get something specifically done. Something with, with like the target of that code is very clear, it's very simple, and it should be done very easy. So what are you going to do? You're going to create that piece of code, and then you're going to put it somewhere, and then every time you want it, you go ahead and use it. It's more like you're building a tool. So, uh, for example, you, you're trying to build a house, and in, in that house, you need a tool. And then what are you going to do? Basically, you're going to build the tool first. And, or create the tool and then you start using it. So what we're going to be doing here, same thing. We're going to create those tools and then every once and every time we want them, we can just go ahead and use them. And once I'm done with this video, I'm going to show you an example of uh, how do I create a function that will build a table. So instead of me repeating the same process over and over, just do it one time and every time I want it, just ask the, the PHP engine, create a table. And that's how simple it is create a table and PHP will create a table for you instead of you repeating the code over and over. Now, um, to create a function, and I'm going to just show you how does it work, um, you need to use a keyword and that keyword is called function. Okay, now in this function um, keyword, after that you follow it with the name of the function. For now, I'm going to call this function fun1. And, and after you create the function, you open a square uh, a parenthesis and you close it. For now, I'm not putting anything there. And then you open a curly brace and then you close it. And between those curly braces, 
you're going to actually write the body of your function here. And this time, I'm just going to go and type echo. And I'll just say, this is a test. And let's follow that with um, a break line. And don't forget the semicolon. Now, now that I built that function, remember here, the syntax is very important. You start with the keyword function. You're followed with the name of the function. And again, the name of the function could be anything you want it. For now, I'm just going to call it fun. Usually, it's, it's recommended to give it a name that represents what it's supposed to do. And then my function here is basically just going to show a message on the screen. Now, I want you to imagine, instead of just showing a message on the screen, build a table. Build a form. Uh, do some sort of calculations. Okay? Now, if I want to call the function, all I have to do here is to come here and call and type fun1 and put semicolon here. And I'm going to call it again. Fun1. And I'm going to put it here. And that's it. This is how I create a function, which is basically those three lines. And this is me calling the function. Now, again, this may not make that much of sense. Why don't you just type echo? Now, it's just, I want you to imagine, instead of echo, imagine you have 100 lines of code. So basically, if I want to get those 100 lines of code to be executed twice, I'm going to have to repeat them twice. And instead of that, put them in a piece of code independently, and every time you want them, you can call them. So at this point, let's just we're just talking about functions, and then after this, I'm going to show you a real-life application of a function. So how does this thing work? Now, let me just save it, Control and Y, and let me go to the page and refresh it, and here it is. This is a test. This is a test. So again, this is how function basically works. You create the function, and then you call the function, and you use it. You create the tool, and then you use the tool. Now, let me just go and show you a little bit more details about functions. For example, just imagine we want to print a welcome message. So instead of this is a test, let's just say welcome student. Okay, now again, if I just save my work here, every time I want to show this welcome student, I'm just going to call function fun1 and fun1. But again, I don't want it to be a generalized welcome student message. I want it to be more customized message, uh, a message for a certain student, a specific student. For example, instead of welcome student, I would want it to be welcome Adam, or welcome Steve, or welcome whatever the name you want it to welcome. So if, if, if you want to get something that level of personalized, you want to send some data to the function to be used inside the function, here's what we can do. Inside those parentheses here, I can come here and say name. Remember here, name here is, is basically uh, a variable. And now after that, I come at this point and I'll put a dot and I'll put dollar sign name. Okay, and I can put a dot here and put a space. Let's see how is that going to work. Now, whatever name is, is supposed to be printed on the screen. Now, let me just go down and I'm going to do some testing here. If I pass, for example, Adam, and here I'm going to pass uh, John. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. Control X and Y, save it. And refresh it, and here it is. Oh, I'm supposed to take that dot away. That was a problem, so we'll, we'll, I'll go and get and fix it. But here you can see, welcome Adam, welcome John. So it's a little bit more personalized. Let me explain what I just did here, so you'll understand the concept of parameters and arguments. Whenever you have a function, and you want to pass a message to the function. Message, basically, it's a piece of information that the function needs to get the job done. Um, and what I'm doing here, I'm passing Adam. Now, Adam is going to be passed and be stored inside name. And then name is going to be printed, as you can see here. So when I pass Adam, I got welcome Adam. When I pass John, I got welcome John. Uh, one thing you should understand about passing values to a function, they're going to be passed by copy. Now, to understand what is, the, what is, that, what is that supposed to mean, passing by a copy, think about Adam as a document. 
and you want to pass that document to Funk One here or Fun One here. So what are you doing? You're you're going to a, a photocopy machine and you're making a copy of Adam and you're passing it to Name. So now you have you have Adam here, but you have Name here, and even though Name equals Adam, but they're totally two different variables. Okay, so an Adam here or name here, which is going to hold the value of Adam, is different than the Adam that you see here, but they still have the same value. Why is this important? Because I'm going to show you in a sec. Same thing here. I pass John. I'm passing a copy of John to name, and it's showing it here, and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So this is my fun one. Now let me show you another type of a function. This time, I'm going to make a, do something a little bit more useful. So I'm going to come here and say function at... And in this add function, I'm going to come here and pass num1, and I'm going to pass num2. Well, this function basically is supposed to add two numbers together and show them on the screen. I can come here and say result equal dollar sign num1 plus dollar sign num2, and put semicolon here. And then after that, I can come here and say echo. And I can come here and put a double quotation. Let's start with this. Dollar sign num1 space plus dollar sign num2 space equal dollar sign result. And then I'll go here and put a break line, br. Let's put a semicolon here. Now, let's go down here. And in this area here, I am going to go ahead and, and, and call the function add. And this time I'm going to add 10 and 20. And let's go ahead and do the same thing. For example, I'll call it add. Let's add numbers with decimal point. Something like that. And now you can see here, it's very similar to the first one. I'm Instead of just passing a name, I'm passing two variables. And 10, for example, is going to be stored in num1. 20 is going to be stored in num2. Oh, this is supposed to be num2. I made a mistake here. Um, now, uh, the function, when it's going to be called, it's going to create a new variable called results. It's going to add those two numbers together and put the, to the summation of those two values inside the result. And then it's going to show me this message on the screen. So let's go ahead and, and save the work. And let's go back to the page and refresh it. Oops, it didn't show me the results. Let's go ahead and see why that didn't happen. Uh, maybe the spelling, R-E, oh yes, the spelling. And I think I misspelled results here. Result, result, so control X, Y, save it. Let's go back here, refresh the page, and here you go. You got the results of adding those two numbers. So here it is, so far those are two types of functions. The first one we started with with no arguments. Now we have one argument. Then we started with we had two arguments. Um, now one of the things that I want you to think about here, which is very very important, is the scope of the variable. For example, what do I mean by the scope of the variable? If I come down here at the bottom, and I come here and say echo. And let's just try to echo dollar sign result. And let's put a break line here. I'm not going to run this code, but I'm going to tell you here, it's not going to show me anything. Now, I'm trying to have access to result. Result is defined inside add function here. And because it's defined here, you're not allowed to use it outside of it. You cannot have access to result here. Okay? There's a way to move around that which I'm going to talk about in a sec. But for now, you should know that result, you don't have access to it. So there's multiple ways or a few ways to fix this problem. What if I actually want to have access to result here? Well, one of the ways to do that is to define result as what we call a global variable inside add function. Even though that's possible and you can do that, but it's not recommended because having global variable may lead to a lot of problems uh, if you don't really pay attention to. So 
the scope of the variable again it basically means the, the lifetime of a variable result you can only have access to results here results will be available only here so when i typed dollar sign result i was able to see results here but when i try to do it here it will not work because result was, was defined inside here. So now the question is, what if I want to actually have access to result? Well, the first method, as I said, is to define result as a global variable. And this is what you type. You type global dollar sign result, semicolon, and now this will be fixed. So let me just show you before and after so you'll have an idea about what I'm talking about. I'm going to comment this section here. Let me save it. Now, if I come here and refresh it, you see you can't see anything here. Now, if I go back here and try to take that comment away, now Control X, save. Now, let's see if I can. Oh, that didn't work too. Uh, let me see why it didn't work. Did I misspell it again? Okay, so here's here's the problem. I just forgot to save it. That was my problem. Uh, now, Control X, Y, S, I want to save it. Then now I should see it. And here it is. You can see it. Now it's working. Previously, I just forgot to save it. That's why it, did, it didn't work. So again, as I said, this is not recommended. This is, should be your last resort, like uh, resolution. Um, you don't want this to... Uh, you don't want to use global variables a lot. So the question is, how do I have access to results? Well, here's what you can do. Here's an, a third or another option. What you can do, you could come here at the bottom and create a new variable. For example, I'm going to call it a uh, new variable, VR. VAR. Equal. Look what I'm going to do here. I can come back to this function here, add, and go all the way to the end. It has to be at the end. Otherwise, um, the, the program, the, the function is going to be terminated earlier. So you type return, and you type dollar sign result. So what's going to happen here? This is telling me that once you're done with execution of all these lines, remember this is commented, so it's not going to work. I want you to return back uh result so even though i called it here and i called it here look what i'm gonna can do i can come here this is another way to get the, the same results or job done i'm gonna come here and type add and i'm gonna pass a hundred and a two hundred okay so what's gonna happen here when you're gonna call this function add you're gonna go here okay num one meet a hundred num two is two hundred you're gonna create a result Add those numbers together, show the message on the screen, and then after that, whatever the result was, which is 300 in this case, is going to be returned to be assigned to the new var. Now, I can come here and say echo dollar sign new var, and uh, let's just put it between double quotations so I can put a br break line after that, and put some icon. Like this should fix the problem. Now, previously, as I said, I decided to create result as a global variable. The problem with global variables, again, uh, they will have no scope. They will have no lifetime. Everybody will have access to it. So sometimes some other part of your project may have access to the global variable and change it. And then you don't know how that change was applied because it's a global variable. So you want to have a good control over these variables. And one way to, get, to keep good control of these variables is to avoid having global variables. But again, if you want to do that, it's available for you. So um, the second way is basically if you want to have access to result, you can return result to your main function. But again, whenever you want to return a result, the, the the statement where you call the function it should be different than this one now it has to be start with a variable and then equal and then you call the function so whatever is going to be executed here and whatever is going to be returned is going to be assigned to this variable and now you can have access to it you can use it the way you want it so let me just save it and now let me just go run it and you will see that i see i have a 300 here and i have the functions called here where is this space coming from? Oh, yeah, because of the result. I couldn't have that because I changed the result here to be global. I only can see the, 
the break line. Okay, so um, the last thing about those variables and the control of these variables is um, what if, again, what if when I pass num1 and num2 here, I want to update those values here and I want to keep the change back in my original uh, function. So again, you may ask, what are you talking about? Let me just show you an example here. If I come here and create a new function and this time I'm going to call swap. Now swap has a job and the job of swap is basically to swap the values of two variables. So let me just come here and say n1 dollar sign n2. What I want to do here is if n1 for example is 5 and n2 is 10, I want n1 to be 10 and n2 and, and to be 5. I want them to swap those values. To do that, we can create a variable called temp and I can assign num2 to temp. So now I have two variables that hold the same value of num2, which is num2 itself and temp. Now I come to n2 and change it to equal whatever n1 was. Now I need to put a new value for n1. Now since n2 was changed, but I know the original value of n2 is still inside temp, so I can come here and type temp and put semicolon. Now just to give you an idea here, uh, I'll just put some comment. Okay. Okay. So for example, n1 equals 10 or 5 and two equal 10. This basically will lead to temp now equal 10. And this will lead to n and two equal five. And now this will lead to n one equal 10. Remember here, temp equal 10 is gonna be assigned to n one. So n one is gonna equal 10 and two is gonna equal n1, so n1 was five, so n2, and I got the job done here. Now, I, here's what I want you to pay attention to. At the bottom of this code, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come here and do the following. I am going to call the function swap, but here's what I'm gonna do. First of all, I'm gonna create two variables. I'm gonna call v1 equal, let's say, five, and then let's put a semicolon here. Let's create another one dollar sign v2 equal 10. Now let's go call that function swap and let's pass v1 and v2. And after that, let's print echo and let's type here v1 equal dollar sign v1. And then after that, we'll say v2 equal dollar sign v2. And let's put a break line after that and put semicolon. Now, I'll tell you from now, this is not going to work for a simple reason. Remember here, when I was passing Adam and John, I told you a copy will be passed to the function. Same thing here. A copy of v1 is going to be a passed to n1, and a copy of v2 is going to be passed to n2. So whatever manipulation and whatever changing you're applying here is not applied to v1 and v2. It's applied to the copy, which is n1 and n2. Just like if I have a document and I made a photocopy and I gave it to you, if you decided to burn your copy, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that, doesn't mean that mine is going to be burned as well. No, it's a different copy. You're burning your copy, it's your business. But my original one will not get affected. And for that reason, after I'm going to execute this line, you will see no change. V1 is still going to be 5. V2 is still going to be 10. Let me just demonstrate that. Um, let me run it. And you can see here, it's 5 and 10. So the question is, how do I make this work? Well, the solution is very simple. As I said, we have basically two methods of passing values to functions. We have pass by copy and we have pass by reference. To pass by reference, all you have to do is to come here and put the ampersand, which is shift seven, and you put shift seven here. Make sure there's no space here. 
When you pass by reference, now whatever change is going to be applied to N1 and N2 is going to be reflected on V1 and V2. So you're going to have to ask yourself this question. If you're passing a value to a function and you want to update and change that value and you want to keep that change, then you have to pass it by a reference. But if you're passing a value to a function and you want to change that value, but you don't want the original copy to get affected by that change, then you go pass by a copy. Let me just save my work here. Let me go refresh the page. I want you to pay attention to the last line here. And now they're switched, 10 and 5. And that's the difference between passing by val and passing a uh, value, passing a copy, or passing by reference. Now, the last part that I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to have uh, a long video uh, with a new page to talk about how do I make a, a function to create tables. Um, I'm going to show you how that will work in a, after I'm done with the last part. Now, one of the things that we like to avoid is to have all our functions defined inside the page itself. It will make more sense. And I'm going to just show you how do we get that done. So what I'm going to do here, let me see if I can... I can uh, Well, it's not going to let me. Let me just go down here. Okay, I'm going to try to highlight. He's not going to let me highlight this. Oh, that's not going to be fun. Do I have to retype the whole thing? No, I'm pretty sure I was able to do that before. Huh. Anyway, it looks like I'm going to have to do this again. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to come here and take all this away. Take it all away. Now I can guarantee if I try to run it, nothing, none of this is going to work. But remember here, we have two functions, three actually, add, uh, fun one, and we have add, and we have swap. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's save this. And let's go ahead and create a new PHP file. Okay. And I'm going to go here and type sudo touch and I'm going to call it my fun dot PHP. So now if I go list, you'll see that I, I should have my, uh, where is it? Here it is my fun. So let's go ahead and do have access to it. Sudo nano my fun dot PHP. And now here's here. It's empty. In this area here, here's what I'm going to do. Um, before I do that, let me just check something. Uh, cat, before I do cat, let me just list cat test one dot PHP. Yep, I need to PHP. Let me just, I just wanted to make sure something. So let's go ahead and, and do the same thing. So here in this area, I am just going to come here and type PHP and close. In this area, we'll start with this function, fun1. Remember here we're passing name. And in this area here, I am going to go ahead and echo. Welcome dollar sign name dot and let's put a br here and i'm done with the first function let's go ahead and create the second function function uh, we call it add and we're passing two variables num1 dollar sign num2 by the way those names num1 and num2 i i i i i am doing them myself so uh remember we have the global which uh we said we don't want to use that result. So I'm just going to come here and say dollar sign result equal dollar sign num1 plus dollar sign num2. And then after that, I can echo. Let's just echo. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Num1 space plus dollar sign num2. 
space equal dollar sign to result dot and let's put a break line here put semicolon and remember here you have to return results this is my second function and now the last one was a swap and I'll just pass uh, percent dollar sign n1 percent dollar sign n2 and in this area here we said we're going to swap the value so let's start with dollar sign temp equal dollar sign n2 then after that dollar sign n2 equal n1 and finally dollar sign and one equal dollar sign temp semicolon. So here we go. This is my function. I am done with it, and I got all my functions. This is my file. Sorry, PHP file, the new one that I created, and I listed all my functions there. Let me just save my work, and I'm done. Now your job is to make those two files, the index PHP file, to be connected with my fun.php file. If you can make them connected. This will make all the functions, everything you have inside this file will be available for you to use inside that function. So let's just go ahead and, and show you how do we do that. Where is it? Uh, not you, this one. So here it is. This is my original index.php file. Now, of course, there's no connection between them right now. To be able to get those two files to connect, we have basically two ways to do that. We have what we call required and we have include. Require and include, both of them will give the same job done. But the difference between them is require, if the file doesn't exist, you will see an error message. Include, if the file doesn't exist, it will show you a warning message. Either way, if the file doesn't exist or there's some problems with that file, you will not get the results. So let's get, let me just show you how those work. You come here at the beginning. Now remember, it has to be at, before you start calling those functions. Require. Oops, not here. In this area, sorry. Require. And in this area here, you're going to have to t tell me, require what? Um, you have to double quotation. And remember, we call it my ph, sorry, my function, fn.php. And put some I call. Now, before I do that, let me just take this away with a comment, then a control X, save it. Let me go back to the page itself and you see, you got nothing. Let me go back here and take this away and save it again. And now if I run it, I should see everything. And here it is. So, this require or include, what, what, what am I doing here? And instead of having all your functions inside your PHP file, uh, your index, for example, PHP file, you can put them in a separated file. Now, the beauty of this is the following. Now, imagine your website has, let's say, 20 other pages. And if those other 20 pages needs the same function that you defined inside your index file, then you're going to have to repeat them there. Instead of that, just put them in a separated file and you call it every time you need it. Okay? Just just get that file, put it in your in, in your in, uh, required at the beginning and then you can have access to it and you can use it as you want. So this is again what functions is all about. It's very simple, it's very uh, easy. Um, I'm going to show you an example later about how do I create a table with functions. Um, most important thing you have to understand, how do you create a function? How do you uh, pass arguments to a function? How do you return from a function? How do you pass by a copy? How do you pass by a reference? And then finally, what is a global variable and what is the scope of the variable? And then how do I use, require, or include to put all my functions in a separated file so whenever I need them at any page in your website, you can always get them to your page. Now, um, this is important because when we're going to be talking about, I'm not sure if we're going to have time for that or not, but we might have time to talk about object-oriented programming in PHP. I'm going to try to skip it, and maybe at the end of the semester we get to it, we're going to be using functions a lot. So um, I'm going to post another video later about tables. How do I create a function that will create tables? And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.